So what we have today is the next chapter. Uh, yesterday, I opened up the homework for chapter 9 and 10. So uh, it's got quite a few questions on it, although I don't think it'll take you too long. Uh, I think it's roughly like 30 minutes per chapter. We got a few kiddos that are coming in late from the breakfast champions this morning. Uh, if you just send them in without fast, then they're okay. Love you. Breakfast of champions. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Tastes like victory. It tasted like pancakes. Tastes like pancakes. And there's sprinkles on everything. No. No? It's just syrup and butter. And sprinkles are for winners. And a breakfast of champions should be almost like 100% sprinkles. <laughs> just like sprinkled cakes made only of sprinkles. Hello, sir. Breakfast of champions. Uh, okay. Uh... And I guess the breakfast of champions, like uh, any condiments are just like the tears of the losers and you just sprinkle them on your breakfast. And yeah, they gave us a cup for all, all, of our all the food. tears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We poured them on our bacon. <laughs> nice, nice. That's the only way to go. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we're going to start today is uh, hurricanes and extra tropical cyclones. Um, I have a fancy new laser pointer that I'm going to try out and see if it... Uh, changes my slides and does everything. Uh, so we're going to go through this pretty quick. Uh, I always say that, and then it takes longer than I think. Uh, but as I was saying, uh, I did get the homework up on Pearson for Chapter 9 and 10. Um, so I would go ahead and start to work on that because we're going to uh, go ahead and probably next week. Uh, I don't know yet what we're doing Friday, but we'll probably lecture over this today and tomorrow. Uh, I'll have some kind of assignment for you Friday. Uh, and then next week, we're going to start in the next two chapters, 11 and 12, so we can get to that next test. Uh, so make sure you're working on the homework. I have a due date set on it for uh, Wednesday of next week. Uh, so you have a week from today to finish it and turn it in. Uh, and that's probably going to stay there because there's plenty of time for that assignment. Uh, so get going on it. The earlier you get done, the better. Um, it's mostly multiple choice questions with a couple of the like reading uh, questions thrown in there. Uh, I think it's still multiple choice, but there's a little reading paragraph along with it. So let's take a look at what they have here today. Um, their case study hurricane for this chapter is going to be Hurricane Sandy. Um, does everybody remember Hurricane Sandy? We all we all aware of things. Not really. How long ago was Hurricane Sandy? Huh? What year is that? I don't know. I'm if I had to guess, because the slide's not telling me. I'm gonna guess. 2008 was was eight 2008 Sandy we'll see we'll see uh does it tell me right here no we might have to wait till the end someone could 2012. 2012 all right so that's that's not too long ago that's not too long ago but y'all would have been pretty young at the time um the thing about Hurricane Sandy it hit a part of the country that we're not used to getting hurricane action uh, and so they seem to not really be super prepared. Um, obviously, the homes there weren't built to withstand hurricanes or at least weren't built with hurricanes in mind. Uh, and there was a lot of damage. Um, and I think it was just a it's an area of the country that we're not super familiar with getting damage from hurricanes. Uh, and it was so much damage and so many problems that it was a little bit overwhelming. Um, so it did hit like the New York, New Jersey area, um, which is pretty far north. We're used to Florida getting hurricanes. We're used to Louisiana getting hurricanes. Um, maybe even like the Carolinas or Virginias. Uh, but all the way up in New York is, is not super duper common, uh, at least from what I know. So let's see. They got a couple pictures here. You can see uh, this person's... Uh, well, it's obviously not their house, but the lower level of this building has been flooded pretty badly. Uh, these neighborhoods over here presumably were on dry land uh, before the hurricane, but it pretty much looks like they're just sitting out in the water right now. Uh, so they're, they've lost a little bit of land and the water's come up a little bit there. Um, so 10.1, they're going to start off with cyclone introduction. And the main thing to remember, cyclone is your catch-all term for a low pressure area that has winds cycling around it, circling around it. Um, so it's your low pressure with rotating winds 
anything like that is going to be called a cyclone. Um, all the way up to hurricane level or just your standard low pressure system that gives us our normal rain uh, on a Tuesday or on a Monday or whatever day. Did it rain this week? I think it rained. Um, anyways, it's just your, your standard kind of weather cycle. Uh, rotating winds and some rain and different storms around a low pressure center. So they have two different types, tropical or extra tropical. Uh, and the idea here is a tropical cyclone is going to form over warm water or subtropical ocean water. So it's forming out in the oceans. Uh, they have warm central cores, and they're going to start as tropical depressions, move up to tropical storms, and then to hurricanes. Um, extra tropical cyclones, in contrast, form over land or water in temperate regions um, with a, a much higher uh, latitude here, 30 to 70 degrees latitude. So lower water temperatures. Uh, they're associated with fronts and cool central cores instead of warm central cores. Uh, strong windstorms, heavy rain, surges, snowstorms, blizzards. Most do not produce severe weather. Um, they derive their energy from temperature contrasts along the fronts. Uh, and so these are like the classic hurricane producing cyclones that we're familiar with. Um, the extra tropical ones just kind of tell you that something's like out of the ordinary. Um, a, that extra word like extraterrestrial not from this earth uh, these are not from the tropical areas that we tend to see our cyclones develop and kind of progress into hurricanes so they're a little bit out of the norm uh, so let's see I actually need to go the other way classifying cyclones um, our classifications they got a couple names here we have nor'easters we have hurricanes we have typhoons we have cyclones um, it just depends on what part of the country or world you're in uh, and what your cyclone looks like. So the nor'easter is an extra tropical cyclone that moves along northward along the east coast of the U.S. Um, notice that they say it's extra tropical, so generally not very big, um, not very severe. But these are the ones that can drop a lot of snow and cause blizzards up in uh, the northeast in New England. Uh, hurricanes are tropical cyclones from the Atlantic and the Eastern Pacific Oceans. Typhoons are going to be tropical cyclones in the Pacific Ocean, west of the International Dateline and north of the equator. Um, what that means, I believe, so hurricanes obviously is the term we use in the United States. Um, I don't know in the Atlantic or Eastern Pacific Oceans. I think that's mostly just going to be the United States. Um, typhoons sounds like it's going to be like your Pacific Asian islands, like, uh, Indonesia and the Philippines. And then in, in the Indian ocean, they're going to call them cyclones. These all three, the bottom three are all names for essentially the same thing. Um, they may have a difference in wind speed as to when they kick those up, uh, and whatever region of the world they're in. But in general, hurricanes, typhoons, and cyclones are all the same thing, just in different parts of the world. Then we have the Saffir Simpson scale, uh, which classifies hurricanes based on wind speed. Uh, here is the Saffir Simpson scale. So it's a one through four category. Um, I don't believe this is the one we normally use. Well, it says one to five, but then they don't show five. Okay, so this is the one we normally use. They just, for whatever reason, cropped off the... Uh, the bottom of the the scale so there is no category five here but we can see category four uh all the way down to one so one starts pretty slow 74 to 95 miles per hour uh winds a little bit of a storm surge 1.2 to 1.5 meters but definitely not that bad they go over the damage no real damage to building structures uh damage primarily to unanchored mobile homes shrubbery and trees maybe boats um, and then you pump this all the way up to a category four and the wind speeds are now over 130 miles per hour, 130 to 156. Your storm, so storm surge is four to 5.5 meters. Um, and remember a meter is pretty close to, uh, what, like three feet? Is it 3.2 maybe? Um, I think I'm getting one of my conversions wrong. Um, but anyways, that's going to be a, a pretty big storm surge, uh, which is just a wave of water that kind of gets pushed up by the hurricane. We'll talk about the storm surge in a second. So naming of cyclones, only a small percentage are given names. 
Uh, extra tropical storms are sometimes called after their origins. Um, they've actually started to do this. And it's interesting. Uh, I read a lot of news stories. and I've read a couple about how this is kind of controversial. Um, we've been naming hurricanes for a long time. Uh, we didn't always name hurricanes. Basically, they decided to name hurricanes because people weren't listening. Um, they were like, hey, there's a hurricane coming. It'll be here in a couple of days. You should really like board up your house and leave. And they're like, nah, I don't think so. Um, and for whatever reason, if you put a name on it, um, then apparently human beings take it more seriously. We're like, hey, hurricane's coming. It's going to knock down your house. Nah, no, thank you. Hurricane Steve is on its way, and Steve is going to knock your house down. Oh, my God, I got to get out of here before Steve gets here. Uh, apparently, that's how we operate. I don't know why. There's probably some interesting psychology there. Uh, but if you name the storm, we take it more seriously and we listen to it. Uh, and so the Nor'easter people, the New York, the, the New England crowd that gets these extra tropical storms that usually cause blizzards um, have been like, ah, well, people don't listen to the blizzards, so we should name the blizzards too. Uh, and that's what they've been doing the last couple of years. And there's, there's, there's some arguments. There's people that are like, we don't need to name the blizzards. And there's people that like, well, we do need to name the blizzards. And then the hurricane people are like, well, if you name the blizzards, then that reduces the effectiveness of us naming the hurricanes. Um, and it's all pretty interesting on like scientists arguing over which storms get names and which storms don't get names. Um, but we do have a system. And I hope, did anybody notice that the naming system got weird this year? Yes, we had so many hurricanes. Which happens. This isn't like a, like a once in a lifetime thing, uh, but we had so many hurricanes this year. We ran out of names, and they had to go to a secondary naming list, uh, which was like the Greek letters. Uh, and we actually got pretty deep into the Greek letters too. I think the last one was maybe Iota, uh, and so um, that was kind of interesting. And I, I think they've decided that they're not going to do that again. I don't know what they're going to do with the names, um, but basically, what happens? Tropical storms and hurricanes given names established by the International Agreement through World Meteorological Organization. Um, we put a name on it once the winds exceed 63 kilometers or uh, 39 miles per hour. So that's not very big. Notice that a Category 1 hurricane was 74 to 95 miles per hour. Um, so we're not even really like halfway to a regular hurricane. When we give it a name. So um, a lot of tropical storms get names uh, if they get above this level. Names are assigned sequentially each year from a list for each origin. Um, what they mean by sequentially, they go A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So the first storm of each year that gets above 39 miles per hour, sustained wind speeds, gets an A name. Um, Anna or Annabelle or Annalise or I don't know why I'm going all Annas. What's the other A names? uh ariel or something uh and they always start with the a's and then they just go b name c name d name and it goes all the way through this year we got to z and still had more hurricanes and so they had to circle back around and use the uh the greek alphabet uh it looks like they alternate male and female names so no one no like males are getting blamed for all the hurricanes this year or next year um and also that that kind of that kind of is bad when like a hurricane destroys your town and it's like your name like Harvey comes through and you're a guy named Harvey living in Houston uh, that that's kind of tough. Uh, what was the we got Hurricane Sandy? There's probably not a lot of Sandys. Uh, Sandys like can't be a super popular name. Um, Katrina. Katrina in New Orleans. I'm sure there's a lot of Katrinas that are like, I don't really want to be associated with that. Uh, and then, yeah, if we're like five years from now, we're going to have some interesting psychology studies on uh, people named Karen and how their life has changed by just being a, being a person named Karen, whether they're an actual Karen or not. Uh, let's see. Male, female names have been alternated. Uh, names are reused every six years uh, if, if needed. Uh, names of big storms are retired. For example, uh, Katrina, there'll never be another hurricane Katrina. That would be silly. Um, Katrina's in the history books, and so you don't want to cause any confusion. 
Uh, cyclone development and movement, movement, tropical and extra tropical cyclones differ in their characteristics and their development and their paths. Uh, most of both, most of both form mature and dissipate independently. Most of both of those form mature and dissipate independently. Um, some tropical cyclones transform into extra tropical cyclones, uh, as they progress throughout their path. Let's see. Okay. So, um, basically this is a world ocean temperature map. Um, and this is going to show you that your, obviously your, your oceans centered around the equator are going to get the vast majority of your sunlight. They're going to have the highest temperatures and therefore they're going to have the greatest amount of energy that they can contribute to a forming cyclone uh, or storm system. And so the vast majority of our cyclone activity happens or, or at least begins around the equator and heads away from the equator from there. Uh, and so you can see that here on the actual map of cyclones from where they start. And it, it basically there's a line for every single cyclone that we track. Uh, and you can see that they start close to the equator and then they head away from that generally. You can see in the northern hemisphere, they kind of curve upward. In the southern hemisphere, they curve downward. Um, and notice one peculiar thing. Where do the uh, hurricanes or cyclones not form? directly on the equator. Um, they don't form on the equator. And in general, they don't tr cross over the equator. A southern cyclone or hurricane will never become a northern cyclone or hurricane or very, very rarely. I don't want to say never. It does happen. Uh, but it, it's very rare that it crosses over the, uh, the equator or even forms at the equator. And the reason is it's the spin, um, the Coriolis effect. The Coriolis effect is going to determine which direction the storm spins. So in the Northern Hemisphere, our cyclones spin counterclockwise. In the Southern Hemisphere, they spin clockwise. Um, and so you can imagine crossing over the equator is going to be a, a devastating physical event because the, like the forces of the Earth are going to try to get the hurricane to stop spinning and actually change direction. Um, that's going to result in it essentially dying out. So you do not see that crossover generally. Um, it has happened before. It's not a big deal. They just don't last very long and generally come out pretty weak. Um, but if your hurricane stays in one hemisphere, um, it's going to develop fully, pick up all that heat from that warm water, uh, and continue on its way. So let's see, tropical disturbances, tropical depressions, tropical storms, hurricanes, we're building our way up uh, into the, the level of a full-blown hurricane. So they kind of have these listed in opposite order that I would have. Um, tropical storm is where we're going to start. So at a tropical storm, 39 miles per hour, that's when a storm gets its name. Um, so 39 miles per hour. Before that, you don't have a name and you're just a, a low-pressure system with some weather. Um, above 39 miles per hour, sustained winds. You get labeled a tropical storm, you get a name, um, and you continue on your way. If it continues to build and gets, uh, wait, wait, wait. They have these out of order. They don't have any data for tropical depression, but I'm pretty sure depression is in between disturbance and storm. They just got rid of the miles per hour for it. I will check that, but I'm pretty sure I'm right about that. Uh, so tropical storm, 39 miles per hour. I'm going to assume tropical depression is in between. Wait a second. It says increase to 39 miles per hour. Ah, I got to look this up now because I want to know what's, what's the cutoff in between depression and disturbance and storm. Uh, what is it? Because there's no way storm is all the way from 39 miles per hour up to 120. So let's just Google it. Oh, my internet's cut out. It's not good. Uh, let's see. Images. Oh, come on. Here we go. So 
the depression is less than 39 miles per hour, then a storm is over 39 miles per hour, and then a hurricane is 74 miles per hour. What is the word? Hold on a second. I got to fix this real quick. So this isn't wind speed. This is size. It's like physical size, diameter. Okay. So it goes from disturbance, which is just a big thunderstorm with rotation. And then it gets bumped up to a depression, which has winds less than 39 miles per hour. So let's do hey. Sorry. This is not fixed, please. Uh, drop the wind speeds increase and begin to spin. Less, less than. Storm is going to be 39 miles to what? Does it just go up to hurricane? Tropical depression, tropical storm, hurricane. Yeah. And so 74. Above 74, you have a hurricane. And then you get into your works. Okay, okay. So let me go back here. Okay, much better, much better. Okay, sorry about that. So, back on track. Uh, it actually is in the order that I thought. The numbers were just throwing me off uh, because I was interpreting them wrong. So, tropical disturbance is your lowest level cyclone. Um, it's basically just a bunch of thunderstorms. This is, here's not wind speed. This is size. So physical diameter across um, for your massive thunderstorms is about 120 to 370 miles, which is a pretty big storm. So we're not talking about small rotations. It's got to be a pretty big rotation. Um, but at this point, the winds are relatively low and the rotation is weak. It's just barely kind of spinning. Um, then it gets a little bit more energy. It starts to build up some speed and it becomes a tropical depression. At a tropical depression, my wind speeds are increasing. They're still below 39 miles per hour, but they are going to start to rotate more and you get your low pressure center that is formed. Then it gets a little bit more energy. Your wind speed picks up to in between 39 and 74 miles per hour. Uh, your storm is given a name. It is now a tropical storm, and your wind speeds aren't up to hurricane strength yet, um, but your rainfall can be pretty intense and can cause flooding. So here they're just showing you um, some of the divergence in the Caribbean um, from hurricanes. Depending on the path coming in, they, for whatever reason, they all kind of converge right here around the Dominican Republic and Haiti. 
Um, and so it doesn't really matter what area you're coming from. Uh, a lot of the hurricanes hit the Dominican Republic, and, uh, the D Dominican Republic, and the and Cuba, um, and then they continue on to Florida. Whether they go into the Gulf or up the coast, just depends on their path. Um, but almost everything kind of goes through this area in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, I don't really know what B is showing here with their easterly waves. Um, they're just kind of showing the, the progressive pattern of hurricanes coming above South America here, just kind of skirting above the equator and then heading up towards uh, the Gulf of Mexico and the United States. So then they get into uh, proper hurricanes, which are 74 mile per hour winds and above. Um, they talk about some environmental conditions for hurricanes. So you have a thick layer of warm ocean water. Um, this is why generally hurricanes happen for us in the, sum the spring, summer, and, and kind of fall into the fall. Uh, but you need that warm water. Without the warm water, your, your hurricane doesn't get enough energy input uh, and it just kind of dissipates and, and loses its structure. Um, another thing you have in a hurricane are steep vertical temperature gradients. So the air above me is going to be very cold compared to the air below me. Um, and that's going to be more drastic than normal. Uh, so that hurricane kind of creates this, this different temperature gradient above and below the action. And then a weak vertical wind shear. Uh, strong winds aloft prevent the hurricane. Uh, prevent hurricane development. So you don't want very strong winds. Uh, you want the winds kind of up above to be pretty weak, weak vertical wind shear. So they go through some structure of the hurricane and we're somewhat familiar with this. Uh, your rain bands are going to be like the arms of the hurricane that come out. Uh, the eye wall is right in the middle, the very intense uh, clouds right around the eye of the hurricane. And then we're all familiar with the actual eye of the hurricane the area where you don't have any rain or very much wind um, because you're at the very center of the storm. So this is a picture from inside the eye wall of a hurricane uh, taken by one of the, the weather uh, planes that flies through these things. It's pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, that's that's got to be a crazy sight to be literally in the middle of a hurricane uh, up above everything. So this shows you some hot air that was feeding Hurricane Katrina um, just before that devastating hurricane hit. And what you're seeing here are these hot towers of air over the Gulf of Mexico. Um, and every time your hurricane comes over one of these, they're going to get an influx of power, of energy from that hot water. And that's going to speed up the development and the strength of your hurricane. Uh, which is obviously going to be bad for the people who are in the path of it. Uh, typical hurricane behavior. So they just talk about the buildup of a hurricane uh, up to the point where it's at full speed. Uh, and then eventually they're going to talk about the dissipation of the hurricane. So like I said, your hurricane's drawing up the, the warm, moist air and water from the ocean. That's where it's getting its energy. And that temperature difference, the warm temperature at the bottom, the very cold temperature at the top is help is what helps drive the hurricane itself uh, and, and produce all this, this movement inside the hurricane. So let's see. Um, hurricanes are controlled by the Coriolis effect um, and steering winds, which is why in general, if we go back and look at that map real quick, uh, they all kind of follow the same path. So you can see in the northern hemisphere, they're all curving to the right. Uh, in the southern hemisphere, they're all curving to the left. Um, and if you watch this, the vast majority of them start off heading from east to west um, and are going to follow that kind of path. So let's see. Upward, oh, we're going to the Coriolis effect. Uh, so in the northern hemisphere, your storms reflect to the right, and the southern is going to be to the left. Uh, they track west in trade winds and curve northwest and then northeast. Uh, the hurricanes can make a loop although that's not super common. Uh, we did have a hurricane. I think it might have been the last one, Iota, last year. Uh, it just kind of bounced around all over the, the Gulf and went all different directions and changed directions uh, and went over the land, and it was, it was being real crazy and not just going on a normal straight path. 
Uh, and North Atlantic, these are steered by the Bermuda High, which is a a uh, like a uh, wind pattern that blows through. So that's going to kind of steer the hurricanes in a certain direction. As hurricanes move over land, it loses energy because it doesn't have that warm water feeding it anymore. Um, and then it can become an extra tropical cyclone and continue on its way, or it can just kind of lose energy and die off. So this is showing you some of the paths of hurricanes as they head towards the United States. Um, so in general, all the paths are going to lead through uh, Dominican Republic and Haiti and Cuba. They're always going to get action. Um, whether it stays low, heads into the Gulf of Mexico and comes over in our area, uh, curves completely out of the way and doesn't really hit us, or comes up the eastern seaboard. Uh, those are your three main kind of uh, kind of options. And I will say before we get back to Sandy, um, this is kind of the path that Sandy was taking, and most of the um, most of the computer programs had it just curving and heading on its way, kind of up towards uh, England over here. Not as a full hurricane, but the, the cyclone itself heading up there. Uh, and there was like one European model, uh, I think just one, that had it curving back and heading back to New York. Um, and apparently a couple people saw that and listened, and they were able to do at least a little bit of preparation and planning before Hurricane Sandy hit. Um, but it was a really odd one that didn't really do what everybody thought it was going to do. So let's see, now we're talking about extra tropical cyclones. These are the ones that don't form over water. Um, so because I'm not forming over that warm water, I need special conditions to happen. Um, basically, I need that strong temperature gradient, really warm air on the bottom, really cold air on the top. Um, and I need strong upper level winds provided by a jet stream to kind of kick off that rotation uh, and, and get everything started. So they're showing you the jet streams here. We got a subtropical jet stream and a polar jet stream. And the interactions with these are going to help uh, to kind of kickstart your, your, your extra tropical cyclones. Um, they just talk about the jet streams a little bit and how the cyclones form. The Pineapple Express here, uh, feeding California in the north, northwest with some hurricane action or cyclone action. I don't know that's a hurricane. Uh, let's see, extratropical cyclone development. They go through the development stages of an extratropical cyclone just as it builds, where it gets its energy from, um, how it progresses. And they kind of have an image of this happening right here. Um, so you're starting over here with A. You have a cold front and a warm front. Uh, you've got that mixing of cold air and warm air. Um, as it mixes, you're basically going to develop like a pinch. Um, and so my cold and warm front start to bend, they start to pinch out here, um, and this is going to begin my rotation. Um, the cold front is going to chase the warm front, and it's going to try to come back around it, and that starts up my rotation happening. So as I progress around to C, I'm seeing my rotation develop. Uh, D, or I guess this would be what? So we have A, B, I guess this is C, and then we go over here to D. What? What? Who does that? I guess they're going A, B, C, D, E, F. If you're going to do that, you don't put it in a circle. I mean, am I wrong? Does this not look like a circle? Yeah. So it should be A, B, C, D, E, F, not D, E, F. My bad. I'm just trying to, trying to understand what's going on here. Uh, so we have the pinch out. The pinch out continues and our rotation is starting here. Um, as everything continues to develop, the cold front is catching up with the warm front. And then by the end, we just have pure rotation, uh, which is what we're looking for for our, for our cyclone that forms. But note, there, there's not a lot going on here. It's not a full hurricane. Um, it doesn't last forever. In fact, by the time it's come across the country, it's relatively dissipated and gone away. Um, and isn't even really an active storm anymore. Um, so they, they did mention that the extra tropical cyclones don't really get severe. Uh, it's, it's just more like a storm. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Geographic regions at risk for cyclones. Um, obviously, if you're close to the coast here, so here's the mainland map. Uh, 
Highest is going to be the outside bend here in Florida. That gets hit a lot and pretty strongly. Um, the rest of Florida is definitely high danger. And then you get moderate as you get away. Um, notice that even here in Texas, we're pretty far out. Uh, but we're really close to this, this slight risk even up here in DFW. Um, and I think that's just because Texas doesn't have a lot of topography. Um, and so when the hurricanes hit, there's not a lot really that stops it. Um, we don't have any mountains or big hills or anything like that. Uh, and so it just kind of makes its way inland pretty easily. Uh, what is this? So this is the percent chance of occurrence in any one year uh, that an 80 kilo in 80 kilometer segments of coastline that a hurricane or a great hurricane will happen. Um, and so if you look at these percentages, these are these are pretty steady. So like for a regular hurricane, every single year, this tip of Florida has roughly a 16% chance, uh, which is a pretty high chance. So every single year, you got a 16% chance of getting hit by a hurricane. Uh, here, like right at the bend of Texas and Louisiana, you're up at like 12, 14. Um, and so we get a lot of hurricane action in the, the southeast part of the country for sure. Um, so they talk about the three different tracks that the hurricanes take, and we saw that in the image earlier. Um, they had them labeled one, two, three, as far as uh, what kind of path they're going to take. Uh, let's see, let's see. They talk about hurricane season. Uh, North America's official hurricane season is June 1st through November 30th. Um, so note, this is where you're getting your warm water from. We're talking summertime, late fall. Uh, where the waters are still warm and you still have pretty, plenty of energy to feed your cyclone slash hurricane. Uh, let's see. Tropical and extra, trop, extra tropical cyclones claim many lives and cause enormous property damage. Uh, both produce flooding, thunderstorms, tornadoes. Extra tropical cyclones can create storms and blizzards. Uh, additional effects of cyclones are obviously... Uh, your high winds and heavy rains, but the storm surge is something that we're going to talk about in a second because uh, the storm surge is is your main problem when you have a hurricane. Uh, contributes to 90% of all hurricane-related fatalities is the storm surge. So um, without the storm surge, we're doing a lot better dealing with hurricanes, but if you factor the storm surge in, we're not. Um, so what is the storm surge? It's a local rise in sea level resulting from storm winds. So it's literally the storm blowing the ocean up onto land. Um, so it's not like a single wave. It's like an actual rising of the ocean as the storm blows it up onto land. Um, can be greater than three meters or 10 feet. Um, because of the spinning, the surge is greatest in the right quadrant of the storm as it makes landfall. Let's see if they show that. And basically, here's what they're saying. My storm is spinning counterclockwise, right? So if I look like down here, uh, as the storm's coming onto land, the wind is actually blowing back out to sea. Um, and so I'm not getting very strong winds here because the winds are blowing kind of the opposite of the direction the hurricane's moving. Where up here I have the opposite. My winds are blowing faster as they come into land and the hurricane's moving in. Uh, and so that storm surge is what pushes everything up on land. And we'll finish this up tomorrow with part two of this lecture. Everybody.